Hello lovely people, Nicole here. I thought I'd give you a midsummer's garden tour. The good, the bad, and the ugly, because sometimes I don't even take my own advice. And of course, I'm gardening organically. I'm going to start with what was a tragedy, but which has actually turned into a glimmer of hope. So if you saw my zucchini tips video uh, a couple weeks ago, you saw how big and beautiful these zucchini were. I had a big thunderstorm blow through here. I had an enormous one right here, a zucchini uh, romanesco. That was huge and I was growing it vertically up a pole. And those leaves were so big that they were like sails and the wind just caught them and knocked the whole plant over. And when I went to check it, the main stem snapped. <laughs> it was like, it's like losing one of your children. It was horrible. And it was the most mature at the time. So what did I do? Well, you can see I, I cut it, but I actually left the root just in case something like this would happen. And I got really lucky. Uh, I guess this variety can grow back at the base. Look you can even see little buds here. I just might get zucchini from buds right here. I just might get zucchini yet. In the meantime, I've been getting zucchini from, uh, I've got a few other plants here and this one, which is my Rampicante. If you remember this one, this one um, has a woody stem. It likes to vine and check these things out, guys. I just picked one yesterday. That was no exaggeration. This, this long? <laughs> and about this wide, if you go to my Instagram, uh, you can see how I cooked it. It has no seeds until you get to this bulbous bit and you can cook it just like any zucchini that you have. It's absolutely delicious. It's a little bit firmer than most other varieties of zucchini. So that's nice too for a change of texture. While I'm here, let's talk about cucumbers. I just um, did a big harvest the other day, but there are some growing. I've got two kinds. One is China Jade, which is a really long, sweet cucumber. They're super spiky, um, but delicious. And then this kind right here is actually a Japanese variety called uh, Jibai, or Jibai, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. And that's a smoother variety also dense, sweet flesh. So um, we've got a happy cucumber section here. My only issue is that I'm seeing a little bit of mealy bug here, but it's not too bad. Uh, I will show you where they've become a, a big problem in the garden. Let's go over to the beans. So I have this trellis for Chinese long beans. I've got a red kind and a light green kind and some bush beans back here. And from afar, all looks well. Uh, however, I think I am starting to get a mealybug infestation. What are mealybugs? They are these little tiny creatures that have kind of like cotton fluff attached to them. Anywhere you see ants climbing up your uh, long beans, it's very likely they are farming those things. What does that mean? They are allowing the mealybugs to suck on these plants because they excrete a sweet substance called honey, honeydew, just like aphids that ants like to eat. So two days ago, I came out with a little cotton pad um, with rubbing alcohol and just wiped down my long beans. You can see them jumping off, literally. They're back. Uh, yep, right here. Do you see this guy on me? <laughs> so I am going to have to do a neem oil treatment on these, and I'm going to do it very carefully so that I'm just targeting the beans and the stems, not the flowers, so I'm not interrupting any pollination going on. But despite it all, check these out, guys. This pair of long beans is definitely ready to be harvested. You can eat these just like French beans. You can chop them up in pieces, nice and small, or you can just curl them up like spaghetti and eat them like that. So let me grab my clippers and clip these off. Check them out, woohoo! First long beans of the season. I am growing green ones and I am growing red ones, which have not um, begun to grow yet. I have flowers, but no beans yet. 
um, but very soon, I will be able to harvest these all summer long. They love the really high temperatures, unlike the bush beans, which will peter out uh, probably by the end of July, but these will keep going, which is why I dedicated some good real estate to them. Now, let me show you the purple TP bush beans that I've been growing, which are gorgeous, but like the mealybug problems I have here, um, they are probably a bit worse in my bush beans, and I think I'm starting to see the effects of them. Um, I was getting beautiful beans, and now they're kind of maturing in a stunted way. Let me show you over here. So I harvested a bunch yesterday, but there are some over here, and um, there is some white fuzz on them, which is a telltale sign that the mealybugs are around. In fact, that whole stem has them. Um, so again, I'm going to do a big neem oil uh, treatment. I'm going to get all my beans, uh, the long beans and the purple teepees, which have been delicious, by the way. They're like a typical green French bean. And in fact, they don't hold the color when they're cooked. They do turn green. While I have you in this corner, come with me right here to this beast. This has been munched up a lot. I'm not too concerned about this. I am not growing this kale to eat, although you can. Um, it's perfectly edible. This is called walking stick kale and it's such a cool variety. These stems are so thick and this thing is going to grow probably as tall as this post, which is why I have it next to this post. It's just grown in the ground. I just put a little bit of compost on top, um, but it will grow up here. The history of this thing is that it was actually used as walking sticks. When the stem gets really thick, they would chop off all the leaves and carve it and literally lacquer it and use it as a walking stick. So we'll see how big mine gets. I also have a volunteer one over here that I've just let grown in the lettuce bed, which has finally petered out. It's all bolting now and I'm letting it go to seed. Uh, but we've had a two month run of that stuff. Delicious. If you guys saw my recent tomato tips video, um, this is what the tomatoes are looking like now. Everything's looking super healthy. Um, there is a lot of beautiful fruit. Like you can see the markings of what they might be once they ripen up. They're doing beautifully well over here where I did the uh, Florida weave. Let me show you what happened to the ones that I had in stakes not quite as wonderful. Another thunderstorm came through and I had not kept up with the staking. Like I told you guys to do, right? Every couple of inches, put uh, a string or some way to support uh, the tomato vine against the pole. I didn't keep up with that. So I came out and all of these vines were sort of flopped over from the last point of contact that I had made with a string. So as you can see, it's a bit of a mess now, but um, they're pulling through, they're fine. It's just that I've had to sort of put in a whole bunch of extra stakes and some string to sort of hold up where uh, fruiting is occurring. Um, but here's another cool variety. These are Blue Beauty tomatoes that I got from Baker Creek. All of these seeds in my garden uh, were from Baker Creek. This is going to turn red. It'll be red at the bottom and sort of a bluish black shoulder on top. I planted carrots here and only a few germinated, which I'm sure was my fault because they're really difficult to keep moist. Um, to allow for germination, but I did get some and I'm letting them grow as long as I can before the heat really kicks them out of here. And check this out, guys. Look, I'm going to pull a weed here. I am not exaggerating when I say this is going to be like the 12th weed I have picked all season long. If there's anything I can tell you about no dig gardening is that I have gotten no weeds in my bed, like just little tiny things, usually along the edge, which is my own fault because in the beginning, I wasn't keeping up with, as you can see, I have to um, weed whack in between my beds. And so some of those weeds got really tall and the seeds fell on the edges of the beds. And that is the only weeding that I have had to do, which is awesome. The other thing is that I have not hit any of this garden with fertilizer. It's all coming from the mushroom compost 
that I put on top of these beds. It's a bit of an experiment. I'm happy to put um, some like kelp fertilizer on if I need to, but so far I haven't. Any kind of chemical fertilizer, uh, natural or synthetic, is going to change the composition of your soil. You know, it can make it more salty. Um, I am just seeing if no dig gardening can provide all the nutrition for my plants. So far, so good. While I'm over here, I'll show you, uh, I've got three pepper plants back here, all different kinds, uh, Etuda, Zulu, I've got all different kinds of heirloom peppers. I have buds on them. I don't have any young peppers yet. Just like, well, tiny, 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 like this, this tiny. I um, grew like four more peppers in pots on my patio and they are actually doing even better than these um, are. You know, there are microclimates in your garden, yeah? And this, for uh, the earlier part of the season, was a much shadier zone. It has changed uh, as the sun has moved around. Um, so I think that is why the peppers were really slow to start. Um, but now they're, they're looking pretty good. They're looking pretty good. Let me show you what hasn't been looking pretty good. <laughs> That's my eggplant. Eggplant happens to be my very favorite vegetable and they have been really hard hit uh, by flea beetle and other things munching up these uh, eggplants that I can't, uh, that I haven't spotted yet. But flea beetles punch little holes into your leaves. It won't kill your plants, uh, but it will beat them up quite a bit and they're really difficult to catch. They jump like fleas. I've hit them a few times with neem oil, but they have always come back. But all of them have flowered. I've got all different kinds in this bed. I've got white ones. I've got enormous, like sort of globe style ones and eggplants from all over the world. All again, seeds from Baker Creek, who are our partners on this episode. I want to show you that I have blueberry bushes uh, in my garden. When I moved here, I had no idea what they were. I'm still trying to identify them um, and they look radically different. Some are your classic big blueberry and others are really dark, smaller, uh, almost black blueberry with lots of complexity of flavor. Our big issue has been the catbirds. They are, they are these beautiful grayish birds, but they have been finding every which way to get through this netting. So I have had to share my blueberries with the birds, uh, but we've had a great harvest on them. And I come out in the morning, uh, pick what has ripened because it doesn't all ripen at the same time. If you haven't watched my How Does It Grow Blueberries, go do that. The history of the blueberry, which is native to the United States, is absolutely fascinating. There's an amazing female farmer story in that one. So that's it from me in the garden. Next time I'll show you my herb garden over yonder. In the meantime, consider becoming a member and supporting this channel that way. You get exclusive content from me, behind the scenes photos, exclusive videos. Uh, we appreciate the support. See you next time guys.